There's a really interesting color in my head, and it's very similar to what I see on my um, fluorite. It's a mix between purple and green. See, this is fluorite here. A, a combination of the, the wisdom between your higher self or your higher wisdom, higher spiritual wisdom, higher spiritual realities, and your heart chakra. Whatever could have come up during this last full moon in Pisces was a big obstacle in standing in the way for you, a big emotional obstacle standing in the way for you. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is just going to be a general energy reading for your moment, yes. However, I do feel like I wanna talk about these post full moon energies. So story time, yeah? But any, anyway, keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please keep that in mind. Also, um, this is a timeless reading. It, it, Ultimately, it is, a, it can be a timeless reading, okay? So we're just going to talk about whatever needs to come out during the collective. So let's get into story time, yeah? If you want to skip story time, go ahead and check the uh, uh, the timestamps in the description box and the pinned comment below. You'll have to excuse me. Um, I'm still trying to like really pull my mind together, but I'm so much better today than I was over the last week. Um, I mean, that that full moon in Pisces is was one of the strongest full moons I have experienced in a very long time. Um, and the funniest thing about it uh, is that uh, you guys that have been following me for long enough, you know that I've been I've flip flopped constantly over which form of astrology I really follow. Over the last, I want to say six months, although my timing may be kind of off on that. But over the last quite a few months, I really kind of let go of astrology altogether. I let go of really studying it. I let go of, um, you know, trying to fit within one what one one practice um, and trying to fit that practice into the readings that I do here to it, it just it, it became a whole mess so I decided to back off of it because it was a it was a thing where I guess I, I'm hearing myself say that I was trying too hard okay I'll admit that um, but it just it wasn't resonating it didn't really fit into my life um, but but as you know I typically said that I follow sidereal astrology more we don't have to get into why. Um, but in this round, this full moon was in Pisces in terms of Western astrology. So in sidereal astrology, it was probably in Aquarius. And, but, but, and yet everything that I was experiencing, everything that I was going through during that moon, full moon cycle, this full moon cycle has been indicative of the full moon being in Pisces. <laughs> so, but then it got even more confusing for me because it's like, okay, well, the full moon is in Pisces in Western astrology, but in Western astrology, I don't really have any major placements when it comes to Pisces. Now, what I would need to do is really look at my chart uh, from the Western system and see where Pisces falls into my chart. I didn't do that. I was just so focused on dealing with the emotions that I didn't really investigate further, um, which I should probably do now. It'll be a better idea now that I'm a little better. <laughs> uh, but um, everything that I experienced was indicative of the full moon being in Pisces. So what actually happened? So the weekend leading up to the full moon, Friday through about Sunday, I hit this phase where I got this new inspiration and it literally took over everything within me. Like it was, and it, it, it felt like it was the inspiration. It was the drive that I was looking for because I had finally landed on something that I actually wanted to study and I actually wanted to spend my time learning and developing a plan around and a plan of action and how to execute it and how to even execute it at all and you know just learning about it it was great and that's been a big thing for me I've been seeing a lot of sevens lately so other than 333 444 111 555 you guys I've been seeing 555 like ridiculously like there, there was this one day 
sidebar, but there was this one day where I saw 555 at least twice in one hour, and that was just at like seven in the morning. That didn't that didn't constitute the rest of the day, right? So there's a there's big massive change happening everywhere. But um, one 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 two 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 three 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 four 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 five five five. Uh, lots of sevens, so there's been a, a recurring number sequence for me that's been happening a lot lately. <clears throat> it's 707 or 717 or 727 or 737 or 747 or 757 or 767, seven, sometimes even 777, and that type of cycle has been happening for a long time, but this time it progressed from it progressed to, because the furthest I would see with the sevens was just seven, seven, seven. But then over the last week, I've been seeing seven, eight, seven, seven, nine, seven. Okay, so the situation is progressing. Um, but with those sevens, when you look into those seven recurring seven numbers, that often can mean that this is a time to be learning something new, focusing on your hobbies, focusing on things that make you feel happy. And seven is a very spiritual number, but it also promotes learning okay and that's been a topic of contention for me for a while because spirit keeps pushing me to learn something to 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 to, to, to you know j just to learn to study that's the word to study hold on i need to hold on sorry so anyway <clears throat> put spirit has been really pushing me to study something lately and I've always had problems with that. I've always had trouble with that because like I, I'm not I'm not opposed to studying and I'm not opposed to opposed to learning. But for me, I kind of as a kid and then growing up, I kind of developed this complex around studying things that are ultimately gonna be end up being a waste of time for me. Like I don't I don't wanna study, I don't wanna spend all of my time, energy, effort, and attention studying something that's not going to do anything for me in the future. That literally is a waste of time. It con I consider that a waste of time. I would much rather hang out and enjoy my life, enjoy the surroundings, you know, be happy and do the things that I like to do that make me happy than focus all of my time and attention on studying something just to get ahead or just to get somewhere or you know what I mean it, it, it and it rips all the joy out of my life like I don't want to do that if I'm not enjoying it if I'm not having fun so this past weekend I finally landed on something that I was enthusiastic about that I really wanted to study that I really wanted to learn right and so I dove into that um, and I really allowed myself to really really like dive head on full into it because it was Shit, it was better than sitting around playing video games all day. You know what I mean? Like, okay. So I did that over the weekend. But then Sunday came around and that's when the energy started to dip. But that's also when I started to, when certain realities around this thing that I've been studying in this new avenue of interest for me, there were certain realities that started to sink in 737. There were certain realities that started to sink in. Um, and that kind of burst the bubble a little bit, and that only helped me drop into this really, really, really low state where I finally faced or finally came to the core of this feeling within me from where all of this sorrow has been coming from. And let me tell you something, guys. When I hit that spot 808, okay, see, that's the other thing that's been following around. The new part of this cycle with the numbers has been eights, which has been an extremely great sign for me. Just, it's been a sign of hope. Um, look up the number eight, but I've been seeing, but the, the main number that I've been seeing within this recent cycle, along with all the other numbers that I've been seeing, was the number 88. Okay, so if you've been seeing a lot of eights, if you've been seeing the, a recurring eight situation, that's part of this cycle. Okay, but when I finally got down to that place where I was able to face this sorrow within me, it just, it exploded. It exploded, like it just, it just, like it was just a big, like a, like a, a geyser of emotion. And it was surrounding the fact that I was starting to face the reality with deep within my soul of sorrow surrounding the reality of all the suffering that I personally have been dealing with as a, as a person growing up in this world, 
And then also that translates into others. But for me specifically in this period, it was me grieving for myself. And um, it got to a point where on Monday, Monday is when it really like really fully like like fucking Mack truck hit me, right? The actual full moon was on Monday. And the kicker of all of this, you guys, was I had no idea there was a full moon coming. That's how out of sync, out of tune I was with that. But I mean, like, it, but as soon, but then Monday came around and I, and all of this happened. And then I, and then I, somehow I got wind of the full moon and I was like, oh, that's why this is happening. It's the full moon. And then I learned it was the full moon in Pisces. I was like, oh, okay, now I really get it. But this level of sorrow. So Monday came and that's when it really hit me. And I was trying to pull myself together to do, to get some work done. Like, to do morning coffee or like to, you know, to keep up with my schedule for Mystic Unicorn, which is my my second channel now, my love channel. Go ahead and check it out. Link can be found in the description box and the pinned comment down below. But I, I had to stop myself um, and I just had to sit on the floor and just cry and cry and cry and cry. And let me tell you something, guys. I haven't cried that hard since I was a teenager. Um, like, you know, when like you're crying really hard or even when you're laughing really hard and the muscles in the back of your head, like right in these points right back here, they get sore. Like they just, because of, because just the sheer force in how your muscles are contorting with the emotion that you're feeling. You guys, I have not cried. I have not sobbed like that since I was a teenager. And I, I briefly went on to Patreon to just give people an update to let them know that I was okay, that I hadn't disappeared. Um, but I explained it over in Patreon. I was like, it was like when I was a kid, I was a teenager and like, I, basically I was facing a ton of injustice and there was literally nothing I could do about it because I was a kid. And, and it's like, it's just so overwhelming and you're just like, you're not only crying, you're like rage crying. <laughs> That was kind of how it felt, you guys. Like I had, and 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 when I was sitting in the moment, the things that I was feeling was number one, I was exhausted, and not just on a physical, like my physical body and my physical energy levels were low. On a soul, my soul, like my soul was exhausted, and it was exhausted and just with exhausted with, and tired of just being tired of struggling so much and I remember and it's not even like I'm, I mean like whatever struggles are, re are relative but for me it was struggling so much emotionally like it's been one big emotional battle my whole entire life I will say that that emotional battle that emotional warfare has really helped me get stronger and stronger and stronger and yes my natural sensitivity only made that harder to deal with but in that it's like it's like it's like emotional strength training okay but it's exhausting and my soul i remember my soul feeling saying to me or just feeling through the energy and it translating into i'm i i'm i'm tired of feeling and that and and that actually struck a chord within me because at that moment i remembered the soul or spirit your spirit it doesn't like like emotions emotions and the cognitive mind okay are are um products of these lower lower density realms, realities, okay? These are products of the three-dimensional reality. And it's from your cognitive, your, your intellectual thinking mind, okay? And your emotional body that your soul, <coughs> excuse me, that your soul is able to navigate in this physical world because this physical world is so 
is so starkly different from the spiritual worlds that our spirit and our soul originate from. We need these extra tools like the mind and the emotional body to navigate through this reality. And it's from your emotions that you realize or that you're able to understand what it is you like and what it is you don't like, what it is you want and what you don't want. Your emotions are literally your compass in this world. And so these are not, these are not, um, I guess we should say realities, your mind and your emotions are not realities atypical of your soul's original place of, or, or, of or origin, your soul's, your spirit's place of origin. And it's, it's taxing, especially when you go through such difficult circumstances over and over and over and over again. It takes a toll on your soul, on your spirit. And I was, I was in that moment feeling my soul say, I've had enough. Like, I'm tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of feeling. I'm just exhausted. And I cried, you guys. And I cried so hard that I literally felt like it was such an emotional wave, an emotional storm that I felt like a zombie afterwards. And I was able to get through what I needed to get through over the last few days when it comes to Mystic Unicorn. And like, I literally, I, I forced myself straight up and down. I forced myself to get through that because I have a plan and I need to stick with that plan. All right. So I did what it is I needed to do. And I, I, I swear I didn't do anything else after that. Like I couldn't, I was completely unable to do anything else other than that you guys this oh I, I, but i will say from my point of view from what it is i've experienced i will say this was a good thing because it was a fine it was somewhat of a final release that i needed to really allow myself to move forward and now that i've come now that i've sufficiently come out of it to say i am okay and i can keep moving i i see i see the clearing that happened there I feel the clearing and the cleansing that happened there and I'm ready to move forward. I mean, I was even almost ready to do it yesterday. I woke up yesterday morning and was like, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Can can we can we do this today? And I and I and ultimately I was kind of like, mm, you know what? Let's give myself one more day just to make sure everything is cool and clear and then we can move forward. And I'm glad I did that because today I feel so much better. You, like, it felt so good to get up this morning and, like, shave and, like, shower and just wash all of the gook, all of the, all of the muck off of me. Whew. I'm going to get more coffee and then we're going to get started. 1717. Hold on a second. All right, y'all. Let's move forward. Let's get into this energy reading. Um, I'm using the Golden Art New... Yeah, I'll use that one today. The Golden Art Nouveau Tarot today, and then we're using the Los Carabello deck for our clarification, should we need any. Yes? <sighs> All right, guys. Let's get into this and see what we've got for today. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, circumstances, and places, places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much spirit all right guys five shuffles here one this is two three 
Oops, let's try that again. Three. Four. Hmm. And five. Another number that I've been seeing a lot lately has been 911. This is five. And originally, that was a, a number that I originally uh, chalked up to, you know, this is a call, call to attention, calling all light workers. But also, 9-11 can also kind of represent the ending of something. The end is near. The end is in sight. Um, as you know, 11 is a, num is a master number. So 11 often is a number of keep your thoughts and your minds in it, your minds, your mind, well, your thought and your thoughts and your mind in check, right? Because something is coming to a close with that nine. The nine is a number of, of endings, right? So this is like a final, this is like a, hey, a high sign. Hey, something's coming to an end. Make sure you stay in alignment. I've been seeing nine along, nine eleven 11 a lot lately. All right, let's get into this energy. What's going on for the collective boy? Excellent. Let's go on. Let's move on. What's going on for the collective today, please, Spirit? What do we want to talk about? There's a really interesting color in my head. Um, what's going on with the collective today? There's a really interesting color in my head, and it's very similar to what I see on my um, uh, fluorite. It's an interesting color. It's a mix between purple and green. See, this is fluorite here. And you can't really see it too well because the color isn't right. But you see up here, you see it's a different shade. This is more of a purple color. And then this, this is all green. What I'm seeing, I guess what I'm seeing is like this faded purple here, but it's with this green color. Um, I'm feeling purple. I'm feeling green. Purple is higher awareness. Green is your heart chakra. So what I'm feeling like here is this is a mix. This is a, a combination of the wisdom between your higher self or your higher wisdom, higher spiritual wisdom, higher spiritual realities, and your heart chakra. So already what I'm feeling for the collective here is that there is a lot, just like what I went through, I came to a deeper understanding of what had my soul in such a sorrowful place, right? And it was being tired. Tired of feeling, okay? But there's a higher understanding. And it's from that higher understanding that you're able to un to move forward with ways or with things that can help you feel better, that can help you move you along, help move you along your path, help you move towards the things that ultimately you want. But it feels like whatever could have come up during this last full moon in Pisces was a big obstacle in standing in the way for you, a big emotional obstacle standing in the way for you, okay? So that's where the purple and the green are coming into play here. All right, overall energy, we're starting us off with the King of Swords. I like this. Now, two cards have come, oh, don't mind the manicure. Two cards have come out here. Um, the first card that's come out, it is face up. It's Temperance in Reverse. But this is not a bad thing, you guys. What I'm getting here is there's some sort of a process that you needed to be patient with some sort of alchemization process, some sort of fusing coming together that has completed here. And with the King of Swords at the bottom of the deck as the overall energy here, what this is saying to me, you guys, is you, you've received the information, you've received the knowledge, the clarity that it is you need to move forward with. Because underneath the King of Swords at the bottom of the deck is the Chariot and the Ten of Swords and the Hanged Man and the Five of Cups, to the moon. Look at that shit. And underneath the moon, I'm sorry, the moon, no, the fool. Underneath the fool is the queen of wands. So what is all of this saying? This is saying that you've reached the final verdict, king of swords. It feels like you've come to a point where you understand something intrinsically or deeply, okay? And you're final ab finally able to make some sort of judgment call on that that allows you to move forward in your life in greater alignment. Like I said, sorry guys, like I said, um, what this feels like between this purple and this green energy, it feels like a deeper understanding within your cognitive process about something that may have been hindering you or holding you back in the past. And now that you've been able to come to a deeper, in, more intrinsic understanding of this, that allows you to move forward. That ultimately is like the green light of this traffic stop that you've been standing at for God knows how long, the green light for you to move forward with. 
the King of Swords to the Chariot. Underneath the Chariot is the Ten of Swords. Something has come to a completion. Some, some old, toxic, really troubling or difficult situation has come to a close. You've reached the, the understanding of that. You've reached the change in perspective surrounding what it is you've been grieving or what it is you've needed to grieve. And because of that, you can now embark on your new journey because of your new alignment. We literally could keep going. We literally could keep going, but I don't want to because I want to finish talking about what's on the table here. But ultimately, we reach the Six of Wands. We reach the Six of Wands to the Tower. Okay. Ultimately, we reach the 6444. We reach the Six of Wands to the Tower, which is a good thing because the Tower coming down is exactly what needed to come down that was holding us or holding you back in whatever way that is, okay? So on the table here, you have Temperance in Reverse. There's one card that's fallen face down. This would be what's underneath the surface for you. Union, the Two of Cups. So this is what happened. Temperance is, re is in reverse here, but temperance is representing the fusing together, the balancing, the integration, the harmonization, the union of yourself, masculine and feminine within yourself, the two of cups. That's why temperance is, temperance is in reverse here. That's why th this is temperance in the reverse is literally sounding like or feeling like the moment where your egg timer that was keeping track of your cake that was in the oven. Ding! Time's up. Time to pull it out of the oven now. I want to pull what's next. Five, five, five. Look at that shit. Okay, I want to pull what's next and see, before we get into any clarification, I just want to see what's next for the collective here in these energies. What's next for the collective in these energies, please, Spirit? Oh, shoot. Well, would you look at that? Okay. Wow. Beautiful. Overall energy at this moment is the Ace of Swords. Okay, so what I heard when I saw the Ace of Swords was the truth cl and clarity. But also you can equate the Ace of Swords to a victory. Now, remember, as I was going through, through the bottom of the deck here, I did say to you, I could keep going, but I'm not going to. But ultimately, just know that we end up with the Six of Wands and the Tower. Well, the Ace of Wands, or sorry, the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords is that energy or that moment where you realize something. It's the truth. It's the clarity that allows the Tower to fall. Why does it allow the tower to fall? Because you are now aware, you have become aware of, you've sought out, you've snuffed, you've sniffed out the deception. Ace of Swords. Underneath the Ace of Swords is the Seven of Swords and the Page of Swords. Now, the Page of Swords is that sleuth, right? Is that is that sentry, is that spy, is the investigator, is the one that goes out all like, all incognito like and like, <laughs> Sorry, guys. And um, and finds the information, right? Sniffs out the deception, the lies, the trickery, the cheating. Now, now look at this. Ace, of, blah, 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 blah. Ace to the seven makes an eight. Look, there's that eight again. But what's underneath the page of swords? The eight of cups. I'm just going to leave that there. Let's talk about what has fallen out on the table. So what's next for the collective? Ace of Swords is overall energy. Yep. Now, two, three cards have come out. Two of them fell face down. And then there was one card that had flipped over in the deck that showed itself while I was pulling. And I was like, wow, okay, that makes sense. I took it. And then I saw what was at the bottom of the deck. I saw the Ace of Swords. I was like, wow, that really makes sense. The one card that's come out face up on the surface for the collective in, what, in terms of what's next justice and you know what's interesting about that is this whole time i've been really i've been really sinking i was really brought into that deep emotional space where i was facing the reality the emotional reality of all the injustice right 
And instead of focusing on getting revenge, well, I hope that motherfucker gets that. I hope their business fails. I hope their car, I mean, I hope their car dies on them. I just, right? Instead of going there, I said to myself, you know what? Fuck it. I, I, I mean, I get it. Ace of Swords, Seven of Swords, I get it. I get why shit happens like this. But ultimately, what I also get is that I'm done with it. I don't want to I don't want to feel like this any longer. I don't want to deal with this shit any longer. One of the other things that I I forgot to mention, but one of the other main feelings that I had during that breakdown was I'm ready for things to just be easier. And that and that wasn't coming from a place of my ego saying <laughs> and like crying and like having a temper tantrum blah blah blah. No, it came from my soul. And part of what was making me so sad was the reality of having connected with myself so much and having worked on cultivating this sense of self-love and appreciation so much that when I was really able to face what I had been putting myself through, I guess that, I mean, like, I can't, I can't blame this on anyone other than my own self, right? Because... Ultimately, your higher self is setting up the lessons and is orchestrating things for you to learn what it is you need to learn in this experience. So I could no longer look at this and say, I blame you, I blame you, I blame you, I blame you. You're pretty cool, actually. I understand why that happened. We're okay, but fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck like, like that. I couldn't do that any longer. At that point, at this point, I had to sit down and say to myself and look up to my higher self and be like, can we, can we ease up a little bit? This is ridiculous. Like, why does it have to be like this? I understand things. I understand we have lessons to learn. But why does it have to be like this? And okay, sure, we'll run into our, like, pretty strong situation here or there every hot second or so. But, like, this has been too consistent for too long. This is ridiculous. And I was crying so hard because I was grieving for myself. For the fact that I had been... Technically, I had been putting myself through all this bullshit just to learn some fucking lessons. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Okay, but it wasn't that angry. It was like, at, to that point, I was just like, I just want, I, I don't care. I don't care about anything else. I just want justice for myself. The cake is baked. That should be the title of our, of our, of our, session today. The cake is baked. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want myself to feel like this anymore. I deserve better for myself. I know I deserve better for myself and you deserve better for yourself too. What's next? Justice. Two more cards that are face down that are, um, wow, that are underneath the surface. Queen of Swords to the Seven of Cups. No more illusions. No more lies. No more trickery. No more baiting and switching. No more pulling on your, your, your emotional heartstrings to get you to move in a direction that's just going to bait and switch you. Just, that's just going to turn out to be a disaster. No more of that. Queen of Swords to the Seven of Cups. We don't have to go down those paths any longer. We don't have to be the guinea pigs any longer. We don't have to go down those paths of potential danger and destruction just to, well, you know, I love this person, so I'm going to try. Or, you know, I really, I was really, a lot, everybody around me is saying I should just give it a shot. So let me just give it a try and see what happens. If it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. No, 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 no more of that. No more of that. If it doesn't feel right for you, don't fucking do it. Stay far away from it. Don't allow anybody to, to, to swindle you into giving it a try. Oh, just give it a chance. You never know what could happen. Oh, no, no, no. No, I do know what's going to happen. Because my emotions, my feeling body is already telling me that I don't want to go down that path. That I don't want to do that. And I don't care how eventually it's going to manifest its way in proving itself to me that I didn't want to do that. All I know is, all I need to know is, I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to. I'm not going down that path. 
I'm not giving this a shot. I'm not giving it a try just to, just to make you feel better. No, doesn't feel right for me. I'm not doing it. That's how this justice starts. That, that, you guys, that is how this justice starts. Discernment for yourself. And now that you have this better version or this better understanding or this better representation of the, of the union of masculine and feminine within you, you have a much stronger place to say yay or nay. And that's beautiful. <laughs> I love this, guys. All right, let's move forward. I want to get a little bit of clarity. And really, the only thing that I want to talk about in terms of clarification, I want to talk a little bit more about this Queen of Swords and the Seven of Cups energy for us here, yeah? So let's get into this here. Five shuffles. This is one. So as you can see, I started painting my nails again. And this time around, this is two, I followed my mom's advice and I got myself some of those dish gloves that I can use to protect my nails when I'm doing dishes. This is three. But it seems that it really hasn't helped that much because I still have this going on. You know what I mean? But like, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> this is four. Two of pentacles is in reverse here. No more juggling. Excellent. I like that. This is four. And that definitely feels like, in terms of like the juggling energy, it feels like, um, yeah, no more allowing others to influence. Again, no more allowing others to influence you into things you don't want to be doing. Things you don't even need to be doing. This is five. I feel so much better, you guys, today. So much better. All right, let's talk about this. Queen of Swords, Seven of Cups in reverse. You guys, that energy was so fucking extreme that I almost, like I was this close to shutting down the channel. Shutting down the channel, uh, deleting all of the videos from it, shutting down Patreon, and I was this close to sending a message to someone that um, I'm personally having trouble with. I'm having an internal struggle surrounding i haven't told this person about it yet which is part of the problem but i don't also i also don't know how to bring this to the person yet in a respectful and beneficial and healing way because if i were to, if i were to bring it to this person um in the current state it may not go so well right because i'm still a little emotionally raw around it but i had i was this close to sending some to sending this person a message saying i don't want to be friends with you any longer our relationship ends here, but I didn't. Like, that's how strong this emo these emotions of this full moon have been. Whew. Okay, so let's talk about this. Queen of Swords and the Seven of Cups. Let's get a little bit deeper on this one. What is the Queen of Swords with the Seven of Cups here for the collective? What is the Queen of Swords with the Seven of Cups for the collective? What is the Queen of Swords with the Seven of Cups for the collective? Wow. The Queen of Swords and the Seven of Cups for the Collective is the Eight of Pentacles upright and the Six of Cups reversed. So, 737. So, what this is saying to me is that uh, it's saying two things, to be honest. It's saying, in terms of the past, you're not working, you're, you're working. You're developing, you're building, but not in terms of situations from the past any longer. Okay, so maybe it's not saying two things. Maybe it's just saying one big thing. But the biggest thing that I'm feeling here is, well, it is kind of saying two things. Because first it's saying that you're not working on things from the past. You are working. You're continuing to build. Yes, that's what it's saying. But it's also saying there's a rejection of situations from whatever, from the past. Six of Cups is in reverse. And what I guess, I, what I really want to say with this is we are only moving forward. We are not moving backwards. We are not looking backwards. And we're damn sure not trying to bring anything from the past into the current moment. No, we are moving forward only. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Eight of Swords. But, but, 
eight, eight. 88, you guys. Look that number up. 88. Anything else you want to say for the collective here with this eight of pentacles, six of cups in reverse for the queen of swords, seven of cups, and justice? Anything else you want to say, spirit? Anything else you want to say? Booyah, bitches. Page of Cups is at the bottom of the deck. New emotional reality. You have the magician with the star that's fallen out face up. That's on the surface. Moving forward. Finally, underneath the surface. Ooh, underneath the surface is the Hierophant. That sure is interesting. But what the Hierophant is representing here is your foundation. The, what it is you learned in this physical reality is solid. That's what's actually driving you. The Hierophant feels like your foundation, your solid foundation that's keeping you moving forward. That's allowing you to move forward in a stable way. And the Hierophant does not represent institutions or anything like that in this situation. The Hierophant represents the culmination of the lessons that you learned in this physically dense reality. Beautiful. Beauty must even. All right, kids. Let's close this out. And I'm hearing Lightworker Oracle. Five shuffles. One. Two. Three, four, and five. Four, 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 again. Mm -hmm. Okay, spirit. <laughs> Let's get into this closing oracle message for the collective, please, spirit. Closing oracle guidance for the collective. <laughs> There it is, right there. Card number five, karma clearing. Boop. Again, say, say it with me, y'all. You can't what? You can't make this shit up, right? You are fast outgrowing a level of consciousness to which atta are attached particular wounds, issues, and struggles. As you outgrow that consciousness, these issues will release their grip on you. You are receiving divine notice that karmic clearing is taking place through a combination of your own efforts and spiritual grace from the heart of the divine. It is time for an old wound to be released once and for all. Let's continue. Karma is not punishment. Karma is essentially our soul's lesson plan for this lifetime, carried over from past lifetimes. It is the way we grow and develop as a soul, sometimes through challenges and sometimes through blessings. Our, quote, positive karma, unquote, is seen in the skills and talents we have mastered over many lifetimes. Also, when opportunities flow easily and healing happens swiftly, there is a sense of positive karma and easy grace that effortlessly takes place in your life. This is what happens when we are clear enough of our own past pain to have little resistance between us and the natural flow of life. More challenging karma is revealed in the lessons we are still learning. These usually appear in the guise of painful circumstances or reactions that repeat themselves in our lives. The stronger the soul, the more challenging the lesson it, it is willing to master this lifetime. As with any ed education, the higher the level of training, the more demanding the work. When we are working through big challenges, it is often a sign that we are on an advanced spiritual path. Must you always have struggle in your life as an advanced soul? Of course not. As you master your lessons, you will find and develop an ability to live your life more peacefully. Emotional strength training, spiritual strength training. However, it would be incorrect to interpret a struggle as a sign that you are not progressing spiritually. Sometimes the more painful a struggle has been, the more difficult it can be to release the pain and associated memories or scars. 
The spiritual worlds know you are in need of divine intervention to help clear a pattern that was once painfully lodged in your body, mind, and soul. Enough of the struggle. Divine love now offers healing and freedom. We clear karma by learning to trust and relax, by choosing not to punish ourselves with shame, guilt, fear, or unworthiness, by continuing to balance our efforts with a surrender into divine grace. We take responsibility for our own healing, doing all that we can, and trusting that the universe will lovingly and effectively handle everything else so that we can progress and succeed. If you have been struggling with a long-term issue, this oracle card comes as a particular sign that the universe wants to, wants to step in and assist you. Invite these healing blessings of karmic clearing through love into your life now. Woo! 4444 on the fucking counter. There you have it, you guys. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope it was helpful for you. I love you all so fucking much. And I hope you're okay. And I'm sending you so much love and grace and, and, and beneficial energies to help you through this challenging moment. And with that said, I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup, cup of coffee very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>